want? You want some Kool-Aid? Man, you know I want some Kool-Aid. Get some oh. sour cream and onion chips. I ain't got no sugar. You ain't got no sugar? Damn! Some beef jerky. Y'all got Kool-Aid, no sugar. Some peanut butter. Peanut butter, no jelly. Get some Hagen dazs ice cream bars, a whole lot of hot. Make sure chocolate. Gotta have chocolate, man. Uh, Ham, no burger. Ham. Some popcorn, bread popcorn, graham crackers. Graham crackers with the marshmallows, the little marshmallows, and little chocolate bars. And we'll make some s'mores, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yo. <laughs> you want me to go get the sugar or what from my house? Yes. And. Welcome back to the Cult of Films. I'm your host, John Dunning, and I'm joined by a very special guest returning on the channel and returning on the Cult of Films uh, for the first time in a while, Mr. Tony Walters. Welcome back, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Uh, you get to christen the very first attempt at a double feature episode. That's right. We're talking about probably uh, a little too late. We probably should have done this maybe 420 or something. But however, we're still going to have a ton of fun because we're talking about 1995's Friday and 1998's Half Baked. Why are we talking about these films uh, not in the right month, Tony? I don't know, because you messaged me and said, you want to talk about Friday or Half-Baked? And I was like, I love both those movies. You're like, let's talk about both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, you think cult films over the years, and some are, like, super obvious, and some are not so obvious. And it's just like, these were kind of like smash hits back in the day. So it, it, it kind of fringes on the line. I, I think maybe Friday is more considered a, a financial success than Half-Baked was. But, you know, these still were such a huge part of a certain type of culture back in the 90s. I think the just over the years, it's gained that type of a, a, not only a mainstream following, but a cult following as well. Both these movies launched careers for tons of actors and the directors and everybody involved in these movies. I mean, you know, Friday, like, launched F. Gary Gray. Like, you know, he was doing music videos, and this just really, this was his first feature, right? That's right. So... We're going to do these in order. We're going to, you know, obviously we'll, we'll probably lump them in uh, together a little bit, but we're going to try to review these two kind of as their own. But let's jump right into it. So, so Friday is a 1995 American comedy film directed by F. Gary Gray, starring Ice Cube, Chris Tucker, Neil Long, Tiny Zeus Lister Jr., Regina King, Bernie Mac, and more. Let's take a quick look. Now, your mama told me what happened to you yesterday. How the hell are you gonna get fired on your day off? Damn! Look, look, she bending over. I'm Miss Parker. Hi, boy. Miss Parker just don't know. Come here. What's up, Big Palm? I mean, Big Wine? If you ain't got my money, I'm killing you and him. You don't drag me into this? I'm used to stealing. Get in and get out. Here come Debo, give me your stuff. You want me to ask for my bike back? What bike? The one I let you use a couple of weeks ago. That bike. Damn! Count out my money. 40, 60, 80, 120, 140. I don't think you apply yourself, Smokey. Why? Lord, have mercy. Just give me three and a half minutes. Maybe even four. Hey, who's that? Oh, no. Try by! What's going on? I don't know. It sounds like machine guns. So you gonna loan me the money or not? I wouldn't feel comfortable lending you $200 without a job. If I was working, I wouldn't need $200. Exactly. Now, Dana told me about that big snake situation. Big worm. Big worm, big hole, big... I don't give a damn! I'm gonna kill you and Smokey. You need a job. You need a wig. What you looking at with that girl for? Talking about she look like Janet Jackson. Control. Got out the car looking more like Freddie Jackson. Oh, my back, my neck. I'm suing y'all. I want 150000 
but I'll set out of court right now for 20 bucks. Ice Cube, Chris Tucker, Bernie Mac, Johnny Witherspoon, Tiny Zeus Lister, and Mia Long, Friday. Don't ever, 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 ever come by here, okay? I said a hip. The hip, the hip, do the hip, hip hop, you don't stop the rocket to the bang, man. We can say up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to be. Before we jump into Friday, I am joined by a, this is like a beer for breakfast episode. We haven't done one of these in a while. Unfortunately, it's an InBev, but I've, been, I've fallen off the wagon, dude. I'm usually a lot more punk rock as far as not drinking InBev stuff, but the split shot is just such a good breakfast milk stout, and I just had to. Uh, well, let's just say you're, you know, way more punk rock than me today, because <laughs> I am drinking a Heineken Zero Alcohol. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, because Becca went to the store the other day and picked up a six pack of Heineken and then it was zero alcohol and she didn't realize it. <laughs> oh, man. Have you tried one of these yet? No, I haven't tried one. Oh, so Perfect. We- uh, I put it in the freezer like 30 minutes ago, so oh, let's see. <laughs> oh, man, this is going to turn into a, an NA uh, reaction video. This is great. <laughs> well, while we're waiting for you two to crack that that uh, beast, L'chaim. <laughs> oh, yeah. Super good. And? Not bad, really. It's like I'm good. <laughs> Perfect. This is for, uh, you know, lunch breaks uh, while yeah. you're on the clock, I guess. <laughs> I'm on my lunch break for work, so I figured non-alcoholic was the way to go. That is the way <laughs> to go. All right, yeah, so Friday. This was directed by F. Gary Gray, and his first feature, on some of the shows on this channel, we, we talk, you know, we go really in-depth about uh, certain directors and stuff, and we specially focus on directors' first features, and... Not only is was Friday just like you know a three point five million dollar budget and it made twenty eight in the in the box office, but this was such like a competently made, really funny film, obviously, and something that he wouldn't really go to this well a lot in the in in his later films. Right, I think something that really stands out of this movie is that it's it's funny, but it it's not like it has moments that are definitely really high comedy and a little bit like you know. Uh, some somewhat unrealistic, but for the most part, this movie feels extremely grounded, mm-hmm. and the comedy in it feels like real, like you're hanging out with a buddy kind of comedy, and I, that's what makes this movie work is the is that sense of like authenticity about it. Oh, for sure, and I think all, all that kind of over the top comedy comes from Chris Tucker. This was one of his first films, and really launched his career too. He would, you know. I think the only other film that he's even more off the walls is probably like Fifth Element, where he's just like full on <laughs> Chris Tucker. Like, yeah, you know? well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, Fifth Element, and then also you know you got to keep in mind the uh, uh, the Rush Hour movies too, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that 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 just feels like Smokey with a badge, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what that is. <laughs> yeah. And it, from at least for me, that just didn't work as much as this. Smokey feels like a grounded friend, like Ice Cube. For his background, I mean, he puts in a, a really grounded and believable performance. I mean, Ice Cube, you know, he definitely had a career before this movie. And, you know, he is pr- probably, I mean, I don't know this for sure, but I assume like kind of what pioneered this movie. He wrote it, um, you know, starring in it. And then he brought in the director of one of his music videos, which was uh, It Was a Good Day. So, yeah. I mean, you know, he just like kind of was like, hey, I got the story idea. Let me contact, you know, the people that I know that do, you know, this kind of thing and see if we get a movie made. And that is, that's indie filmmaking, you know, at its best, I think, is uh, you've made some connections, you know some people, can we make a movie happen and get somebody to sign off on our crazy idea? And this was around the time where they definitely didn't trail Blaze, uh, Blaze pun intended, the the stoner culture films, right? Like, I, f- I feel like those were more you know, Cheech and Chong in the 70s. They were the ones that really put this type of, of comedies on the map. But this was kind of the next level. This was the passing the torch, uh, again, so, all, all the all the weed puns <laughs> for movies like Friday and Half-Baked and How High and all this. But this was, I feel like, probably one of the first ones in this new era. If you think back to those, like, Cheech and Chong movies, they were your dad's stoner films, right? But they were always, like, more played like Looney Tunes. They were way more over the top. And even though, like you said, there is some slapstick comedy in this film, and especially in the next film that we're going to talk about, 
it, it does feel just like a day in the life of, of these characters. Yeah, and that's I mean that's exactly what this movie is, and they the the stoner side of the movie like that that comedy, it works because it's grounded, and they didn't really advertise it as being like this big stoner comedy. Like if you go watch the trailer for this movie, it is it's almost marketed like, not I wouldn't call it a family film, but it's definitely <laughs> marketed as like a hey follow these two guys and their antics throughout the day right you know and, it, and and even like the voiceover narration for the trailer just feels i mean it's definitely the 90s like that yeah. 90s guy that's like in a world ice cube chris <laughs> tucker watch this movie here we go <laughs> you know for anyone that hasn't seen this film which is crazy to me if you found a if you're watching a show on the internet called the cult of films i'm pretty sure it's safe to say that you've probably seen friday but if not, maybe, you know, there's some gener- Gen Z, you know, stoners out there that, that, you know, forgot to watch this film. What is the premise of Friday, Tony? The premise is actually kind of ridiculous based now that it's 2020, but they've got to get $200 by like 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's it. Like, no. <laughs> that's pretty, that, I mean, that's it. That's pretty the movie. It's like, hey, we owe this guy some money and we got to come up with the money before the end of the night. And it's, but it's only like 200 bucks. <laughs> like it's not it's not like a lot of money like i feel like you know if you went the half baked style just sell weed <laughs> like, right yeah <laughs> good we sell it yeah it centers around craig he is the son and brother brother in the sense that he has a sister um but <laughs> uh he got fired on his day off the opening joke the opening joke of like the like but like the first scene is how do you get fired on your day off right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he's like, you could tell he's kind of like the more responsible person in the neighborhood where, you know, and then he has this complete pothead best friend named Smokey that is literally just like a, a wake and baker that is just constantly smoking so much where it would he would probably seem like high if he wasn't smoking weed, where that's, that's a big kind of crux of the film too. This is the very first day that he convinces Ice Cube's character of Craig to partake in the sweet Chiba. I think that like that's part of this marketing for this movie was, hey, we're going to kind of market it towards like white suburban families <laughs> and go, <laughs> hey, we're, this character is going to get high for the first time. We're going to follow him through all these crazy shenanigans. Uh, and you might relate because, you know, you might be trying this for the first time at this point in your life, too. <laughs> I think if they just dropped you into this world and it was just literally kind of similar to half Bake, where everyone's just a pothead. Uh, I don't, I think it would come off, you would have to do it more as a slapstick comedy where you get that journey and that kind of, like, Craig has, like, a real growth. Craig's one of those names where I never know if it's Greg or Craig, so I just say it fast and it comes out <laughs> as egg uh, just to, like, cover my bases, but I think his name is Craig. And anyway, it has more substance than just being a, a stoner comedy where he has, like, this little arc. He has this, like, relationship with his father that's uh, definitely a Looney Tunes character. Relationship with this girl. Like, he's trying to get a girl. So it has, like, a lot more depth than a lot of its predecessors. Put it in your mouth. Shut up. I like the, I like that he is the normal person. Like, his <laughs> character is the normal person surrounded by a ton of Looney Tunes-type characters. Yeah. Like, you've got, you know, Smokey. And you've got uh, what's the what's the big dude's name? Debo. Yeah, you got you got Debo. <laughs> like uh, you know Bernie Mac. Like you got all these characters. His dad. I mean, all these characters around him are very much like like slapstick comedy. Like just way over the top characters. But he grounds everybody. Like he anchors everybody down to make everybody feel realistic in the world. And I think that weirdly that works. And I don't know exactly why, but it works really well because it's like. It's it's just one of those like do you ever feel like you're the sanest person in the room? <laughs> like, right, yeah. Kind of things. It's it's that feeling of of he's the only normal person. He needs to get out of this situation. Like he thinks like not maybe maybe doesn't necessarily think he's better than everybody, but he definitely he's definitely got a road in front of him that maybe some of these other people don't have. Mm-hmm. And it's uh you know anybody from like, small neighborhoods or small towns can kind of relate to that when you sure. feel like. When you feel like you're trapped in an area that you can't really get out of, and I think that that is like expressed through comedy really, really well, where you just have all these outlandish characters, but you have him grounded in the middle, and like, how does he kind of like break free from from all that? Yeah, and in South Central, so 
cards are already stacked against you. You know, it, it's harder to kind of claw your way out of this type of of lifestyle. And it, to this point, he's kind of made it a point to not end up just like everyone else, or or, or you know, a, a person that gets killed or something. So he is m- more self aware, I think. And then when he does finally kind of give in and and partakes a little bit, you you see. Like, that is probably one of the most realistic portrayals of, like, the first time you get high. <laughs> like, it's not like, I mean, it may be for some people, but, you know, I remember my own experiences. And it's it's almost, like, terrifying and to a point where, it, it, you know, you're just like, when do I get off this ride? It's portrayed perfectly by him and by the director. I would definitely agree with that because I one of my bigger annoyances with stoner comedies is when somebody takes a hit of a blunt and then they're seeing crazy colors or like stuff's coming alive. And it's like, it's kind of funny, you know, depending on the setting and whatever movie you're in, but, but it's not realistic. And I think that this like portrays it in a realistic way where you're just kind of like, like where kind of the world just kind of goes, Oh, okay. (laughs) This is, this is, this is, these are happening. This stuff is happening. I'm paranoid and um, I think I'm ready to be done. How long we got? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like at least an hour of this, like, like this, this strong for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I ate a whole casserole dish of bread pudding my first time, and I hate bread pudding. But I literally took it from my friend's mom's, like it just came out of the, the oven, and I took it and I ran in his closet and just ate the entire thing. That's, and you know, he's, <laughs> they're looking for like sugar for Kool-Aid and stuff. That's all stuff that is just done so well, and you could tell that these people kind of really knew the source material while making these scenes. Yeah, the first time uh, that I, I'm one of those people that first time I smoked, I didn't get high. Second time, I uh, when I like I get the first my first time actually being high, I got really. I was at a friend's house and he had a bedroom in the basement, and I was, uh, we were like going upstairs to get some snacks. We heard a noise in the kitchen. <laughs> we turned around, ran back to his bedroom. And like, in my mind, I just like, I turned around, he was already back in his bedroom. And I, for some reason, was like walking like a transformer, like robot, <laughs> like through the basement. I just yeah. couldn't get there fast enough. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, my my friend said. Yeah, uh, my friend said I had a very distinct walk, or it looked like in a, like I was being like my shirt was being pulled and I was being led by a very attractive woman. Like I was just like, oh, <laughs> you know, kind of this like weird zombie walk. This movie really succeeded on just like I, I think it should get more credit than it does, and, and I think that it has a huge cult following and, and again like a mainstream following, but just the fact that how much it kind of made this genre kind of re-explode because like I said, it it was pretty popular back in the seventies with Cheech and Chong. This was like the one to kind of lead the way and and it succeeded. Did the sequel succeed? I don't know. I think there's some enjoyment out of next Friday. Ice Cube's character just, he kind of like blends in with everyone else and he doesn't have that like straight arc anymore. It's just like his character now getting into hijinks in, in the next film and the next film after that. So you don't have that like like fleshed out characters or like growth of these of these people. It's just more antics happening to them. Right. With the sequels, the sequels became stoner comedies where the first one's not mm-hmm. the first, you know, the first one's like, you know, a grounded comedy about a couple of friends, uh, you know, that grew up in a rough neighborhood and are trying to, you know, just kind of get through the day where the sequels are stoner comedies. They're really, really crazy shenanigans, lots of smoke and weed, like lots of. Uh, like what's what's uh, what's the guy's name in the sequel? His cousin, my guess, cousin? Uh, like that. Uh, or no, no, not no, no, not him. The uh, the other guy that's in the sequel that has the dog. I cannot think of his name. But this, I liked I liked Next Friday. I thought it, I think Next Friday is a pretty funny movie. Yeah. Um, but Friday after next, not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I I don't think I'd say this on any other film series or whatever. But the the sequels really miss Chris Tucker. I'm not the biggest Chris Tucker fan, but in this role, he is perfect, and he's almost, dare I say, Friday. Like, he is the soul of the first movie. They both are. Like, they both have their time to shine, and just, like, no one's replaceable in the first one. Like, the dad is is super funny. Debo serves his purposes. Like, everyone is there for a reason, and it wouldn't be as good if not, if all the pieces weren't there. But taking, like, half of the Laurel and Hardy type of, of comedy trope 
out of it for the next uh, two movies. It just did not work. And I think it was, what, over financial discrepancies? I I believe so, but I'm not sure either. I think, I mean, Chris Tucker was kind of off doing bigger stuff at the time. Mm. Like, he was doing, I mean, you know, that was probably, assume next Friday is prior on the same time the first Rush Hour movie came out. Sure. Um, so, you know, I mean, he was, Rush Hour was a huge hit. I mean, it was a really big franchise. Yeah. Now he would beg to do one, right? <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't. You know, I don't know. I don't know where he's at. He might be happy with his life. You know. I mean, sure. He, but but that is one of those things. Of, I mean, but my question really is: Would Ice Cube come back to do a Friday movie? I just don't think he would at this point. Right. Yeah. He's kind of become the more family man, kind of almost more wholesome comedy stuff. I mean, he did the the Jump Street movies, but even though those movies, those movies aren't. I don't know. Those movies are. We actually just watched both those movies the other day. <laughs> he's wonderful in both of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say those movies are great. And as far as F. Gary Gray goes, like this would be, I think, pretty much his only comedy. Like you could argue Italian Job has some funny moments in it, but he, like, he was very much into these like bigger kind of like thriller roles. Like he directed The Negotiator, like I said, The Italian Job, Law Abiding Citizen, The Fate of the Furious, which I think is like the 18th highest grossing film of all time. Unfortunately, he just directed Men in Black International, which was a horrible, horrible mistake. He, right. he was a producer on Gus Van Zandt's The Sea of Trees, which is like, you think about the guy that would produce The Sea of Trees, you don't think that he would be the one directing Friday. Ice Cube needed a guy. He was there. He knew how to kind of run a set and, and point a camera. So he was the guy. But I mean, shit, it was such a competently made film. Right, and I mean, you look at that movie, I mean, that movie came out in, what, 95? And then he did Set It Off in 96, you know, with a bunch of music videos in between that. And mm -hmm. Set It Off... It's like the series version of Friday. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I think that he had some stories to tell maybe early on in his career, and then he, you know, around the Italian job era, he, you know, I mean, Be Cool is awesome, he did that. That's a good movie. He's done some really good stuff. I mean, he did Straight out of Compton. Yeah. Like... I mean, he he's done really great stuff. He's also done the big budget action stuff uh, with like with Fate of the Furious. I will say that's like one of my. I mean, I'm a I'm a big Fast and Furious fan, and I was not a big fan of Fate of the Furious. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that you know they just it took a step down for me. But I also think that The Rock has really muddled those waters. But that's a whole other show. <laughs> that's a whole other show that I won't host because I am not a fan of those. But uh, either way, it is kind of cool that he kind of came full circle. And did straight out of Compton. I think he won like an Oscar for that, right? Like it, it blew up. That like, that was a huge movie. And he, you know, kind of came full circle and not only shot a movie about LA and in you know centered around in LA, but he uh, had Ice Cube's son be the the main character playing Ice Cube. So who better to to direct Ice Cube's son playing his father than the man that directed Ice Cube and probably his first big feature? So it's really cool how in the family and how familiar he kind of stuck around with, with that group, even though he never really did comedies so much after that, he kind of, his roots kind of shown out throughout his work. And I'm looking at the guy's face and he's been in some stuff too. He was in, yeah. he, okay. I guess he's just, he's just always like kind of just an extra in his own thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that face. He's got that face. Yeah. So who would you recommend, like, say no one has seen Friday except you and I in the world. Who would you recommend to watch Friday? Man, that's that's a little bit difficult because I feel, I don't know, it feels a little dated in its, in its time as far as where it is. So I honestly, I would be curious to if younger audiences enjoy this movie as much as I do. And same with Half Baked, and we'll talk about that when we get there. But the 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 concepts in it are still relevant. But I don't know if the way the story is told, just look at like weed culture today and what it's yeah. become. And I don't know if this movie hurts that culture or not. Yeah, talk about dated. You know, half the states in in the U.S. you could just go to a pot shop down the street. So it's not that kind of like you're doing something wrong anymore uh, type feel but it, it is kind of funny it's kind of a time capsule to see how we all had a struggle in the 90s as far as hey. that, that kind of stuff goes so i live in indiana man we're still struggling here it's not legal here <laughs> <laughs> I, I would recommend this especially for uh fans of 90s films of course that for whatever reason missed this one but also for like new filmmakers i think 
especially like when they're they're like new or like first features that are this competently made it's really inspiring to see someone and of course like f gary gray was doing a bunch of music videos so so that's why uh, you know like i said before he was probably chosen to do this because of, of his familiarity with the set and running these kind of productions but just the fact that this is the first time like he nailed it and he hit it out of the park so i would definitely say anyone that's like interested in making film or writing comedy because writing comedy is super hard you know ice cube wrote this it's it's awesome it's really good stuff right and i wonder if it wouldn't be as funny too if you didn't have chris tucker in that role mm -hmm. because because like maybe on paper what is funny isn't that funny on paper <laughs> you know what i mean sure like yeah chris tucker just his performance brings the comedy yeah yeah these days you would get like kevin hart in this role i feel exactly like. <laughs> well probably not kevin hart is a little bit too wholesome for that yeah that's true all right well that <laughs> is you. that's that's friday let's uh jump on over to our next one and that is Half-Bake is a 1998 American stoner comedy film written by Dave Chappelle, directed by Tamara Davis, starring Dave Chappelle, Jim Brewer, Harlan Williams, Guillermo Diaz, Clarence Williams III, and more. Let's take a quick look. We look at that day is the day we met the fifth member of our crew. Gentlemen, assume your positions. Thurgood, Brian, Kenny, and Scarface. Just feel like you're floating? This weed is fantastic. Their job stick. You suck, you suck, you suck, you're cool. Their <laughs> sex life is zero. How do I know you're not lying to me? How do I know you got panties on Mary Jane? I don't. And their lives are going nowhere. I'm a professional meter hopper. <laughs> you have smoked yourself retarded. Yo, who's our munchies tonight, yo? I make sure chocolate. Gotta have chocolate. Graham crackers. Pizzas, man. Celery, grape jelly, peanut butter, popcorn, beef jerky. With water. Whole lot of water. You must have been so hungry. But now, they're in trouble. Oh, oh my God! some candy and some chips and some pink popcorn and all we gotta do is raise 10 percent of one million yo which by our calculations is fucking impossible man yeah. the food and drug administration are having us do a study one pound of marijuana and you can sign for it right oh yeah thank you i got it i know how we can get kenny out weed man we'll sell weed isn't that the custodian my way wow <laughs> Not drug dealers, but fundraisers. Go get me this Mr. Nice Guy. Well, you know, I'd be from Jamaica, man. What part of Jamaica? Right near the beach. Bye. From Universal Pictures comes a story that proves... I'm somebody's bitch. Oh. Three heads are better than one. Who's out, man? I just stopped smoking yesterday. I remember when a dime bag cost a dime. Half baked. You can take all the subtleness and all the kind of like uh, groundedness of Friday, and you have just like a, a balls of the wall, batshit crazy movie in Half Baked. Yeah, Half Baked is definitely a movie that I've watched entirely too many times. <laughs> uh, when I rewatched this for the show, I mean, it was like, I don't know, I didn't, it was one of those things where, you know, sometimes, and I haven't seen Half Baked for probably 10 years, but when I, at, at, in that point of time in my life, I used to watch this movie like entirely too much. And I, it's, I think it's because I had a lot of friends that were stoners. And this movie was just always on in the background on a TV at somebody's house all the time. And it's full of a lot of comedians that I still watch today. Absolutely. Um, it's written great. Like, it's really funny. But also, does that comedy still hold up today to, uh, to like a younger audience? I don't know. I still think it's funny. But I'm old these days. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, just an early version of the Chappelle show and you know this is very much written by Dave Chappelle it feels uh, you know very much in line to to his type of comedy in prep for this because I've seen half bake a million times instead I started watching a bunch of the old Chappelle stand-up and he is just so great and you know over the years like Chappelle has a as a 
cult following of his own, right? Like, and he's had some issues and, and he's kind of come back and, and kind of fallen off over and over again. But man, this was like in his prime. This was like early 20s. And he had like uh, his his writing buddy Neil Brennan in here, and just the comedians, just completely that that were involved in this, completely elevated. You, you know, you said something about um, casting in the last film, like if if Chris Tucker wasn't in, like all of these characters, because they had to play such cartoon characters, like they had the perfect actors to to execute this for sure. And the funny thing is, is I think that Jim Brewer, yeah. he he gets he gets asked like all the time, you know, if he was high throughout this whole movie, <laughs> and he actually wasn't. He has a he, I mean, he has a stand up bit about how he was not high at all throughout this movie, <laughs> except for one scene, and it's the final scene with Samson, uh, because Samson, the guy, the actor that played him, got in a fight with Dave Chappelle, and he was leaving the set. So he was like, they had that day and that day only to finish up. And he had just gotten really, really high in his dressing room and <laughs> just like, doosh, doosh, doosh. we got to shoot this scene right now. And he was like, all right, man, let's 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 do it. But that was the only time that he was high in any of the scenes. And it was because it was an accident. <laughs> I, I was watching a, a, a special with him. And he's just like, it's literally just my eyes like are this droopy. And this is really why I got the role for this. And, and he just murders it like he, everyone in this, like Guillermo Diaz as Scarface <laughs> is just like one of the most quotable characters of all cinematic time. Famously, the fuck you, fuck you, you're cool. You know, it's just like. Some of the best lines, and, and again in Friday too. Some of the best lines also. Both right, of these that's what I wanted to say. I wanted to bring that up before we we skipped. Was like you know Friday and Half Baked both amazing lines. You know how many times I've done the fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, I'm out <laughs> thing. Like I went, like leaving a party, entirely too many times. <laughs> <laughs> like Jim Brewer wasn't even stoned during most of this. It reminds me of like Richard E. Grant's with Nail and I. Uh, performance because he he's like not a drinker at all and he plays like the most convincing drunk person on the face of the planet and yeah this is just Jim Brewer it, it's just absolutely fantastic directed by Tamara Davis another person that is not really known for these type of films I think her last like feature film was in 2002 which was the Britney Spears uh, Crossroads that, that usually puts a lot of people's careers in crossroads, so not too surprised that <laughs> she didn't yeah. come back from that. But she did stuff like CB4, Gun Crazy. She directed Billy Madison, which is probably her, her biggest film. She does, like, master class filmmaking thing, more of a documentarian now. Married to Mike D from the Beastie Boys. Well, I was going to say, she did a lot of Beastie Boys music videos. She also did... Uh, she does a lot of TV, is what she mm -hmm. does. She does a lot of TV work. She directed two episodes of Future Man. Uh, so, you know, she's not like completely outside of the stoner comedy world, uh, but she definitely does a lot of a lot of stuff. I mean, she did, you know, like Kevin Saves the World, You're the Worst, Dead to Me. She's done, I mean, she, High School Musical, the musical, the series. <laughs> like, <laughs> like this, this is like going through IMDb here. But she's, you know, so she, she's done a lot of television work and uh, she's still working, you know, she's still still doing a lot of a lot of television work. And, and like in Friday with F. Gary Gray, I think, you know, Ice Cube's just like, hey, you directed my, my video, come and do this. Like, I think that's what kind of Dave Chappelle did. He was probably like, hey, you are comfortable doing these type of, of you know, shoots. We need something for, like, no budget because I, they only, well, I mean, it had an $8 million budget. That's actually more than I thought it would be. Uh, but this one only made 17.5. This was a Dave Chappelle film. It's a Dave Chappelle film, and... You know, it's a there's a reason why it's a cult classic. A lot of cult classic movies don't do super well in the box office, but then have like a huge following on on uh, this would have been on video, you know, on video cassette. <laughs> when it came out. Um, I think I went through a couple copies. But yeah. uh, but should we should we talk about what this movie's about? I feel like we've just kind of blown through. Yeah. It. Yeah. What What is the, uh, the the premise to half baked? Um, the premise for this one is a bunch of stoners uh, who all live together. And one of the stoners, who's a kindergarten teacher, <laughs> accidentally kills a police horse by feeding it too much yeah. and then gets sent to prison for it. He's a diabetic. So, <laughs> so his friends have to raise enough money to get him out of jail. And they do that by selling weed and uh, not any weed, but like the best weed from some facility that's studying marijuana and just so happens that Dave Chappelle's character is the janitor there. <laughs> so, you know, you know, what's funny rewatching this movie, the big thing that I took away from this time around 
was how much of a bitch his girlfriend is. Yeah. Mary Jane. That character kind of sucks. And I think that she <laughs> didn't suck then because the out the, the view on marijuana at the time this movie came out totally. was a negative look on it. So her character was totally like justified and reasonable to think the way that she thought. But now when you watch it, you're just like, man, you kind of suck. Like she's just a buzzkill. <laughs> and the only reason, the only reason that like her character is redeemable, and this is going to sound like really horrible, I think, is that it's the final line of the movie where he gives up, like James Fell's character gives up marijuana, spoilers, <laughs> yeah. gives up marijuana, throws the joint off the bridge, and he says, I love marijuana, but not as much as I love pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and right then you go, okay, yeah, it totally makes sense. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. It's like the – you don't – especially in the 90s, you don't think that a movie like Half-Baked would be directed by a female director with the whole like, oh, no, that's a titty scene, you know, where it's like they're punching these these like women ninja like straight in the face. Like all this crazy shit happens. That's why – well, I didn't realize it was, a, it was a female director until I was doing some research today before the show. And that actually surprised me because of how much I disliked the woman character in the movie. I would yeah. have thought that. Well, but, but it is written by a right. man. Right. Uh, by, by a couple of men. So, but but still, I felt like her character was, like, she's, she's, uh, she's likable, but also, like, I don't know. There's just, like, something about her where she's just complaining about how marijuana is a gateway drug and all these things. And it's just, like, stuff that is, like that we've all kind of thrown out at this point in 2020. You know. It's hard for me to separate her from her role in the craft for some reason, <laughs> but even just like performance wise, she does like everyone else is like cool and just riffing and stuff. And she looks like she's the only one acting, which is kind of jarring in this film. <laughs> right. Well, it's because her character is extremely serious yeah. and, and nobody else in this movie is serious at all. I mean, You've got really outlandish, ridiculous characters, but you do have like the Squirrel Master, you know, yeah. which is Tommy Chong. Tommy Chong, who's wonderful. Great stoner uh, cameos in this: Willie Nelson, Tommy Chong, yeah. Jerry Garcia, kinda. Yeah, Jerry <laughs> Garcia, kinda. <laughs> Stephen Wright is in this as the guy on the couch, just absolutely great. Not SNL people, because I don't think any of these, even Harlan Williams, no. he wasn't an SNL guy, right? No, it wasn't SNL. I think it was just it was just marijuana advocates that they could find, like Snoop Dogg, um, yeah. John Stewart. Like you just have uh, Tracy Morgan. Like you've just, I love that they were like, let's set up a premise, and then we'll just montage through us selling weed, and then we'll come back to like bring in some conflict, and then we'll do another montage of us selling weed. And it was just like this way of, they, like, like, let's get all these celebrity cameos in here for a funny moment. Like, the John Stewart stuff is hilarious. <laughs> the, like, the, you know, you ever looked at the back of a $20 bill? You ever looked at the back of a $20 bill? On weed? <laughs> <laughs> We've all known that kind of guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, that's what they were doing. They were going through all the different stereotypes of, like, different types of smokers, and, like, in the very beginning, you know, when they're kids, they do that, that it's like that flashback sequence of when they all got high for the first time mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, Dave Chappelle sets up all their different kind of character archetypes. And even just out of the friend group, it's like, I've known people just like that. And then yeah. when they go start selling weed and you got Snoop Dogg, who's like the, uh, the, like the lurker character for <laughs> yeah. the column, but like, you just like the scavenger, yeah. the scavenger, yeah, the scavenger. <laughs> and like, I've known guys like that too, who just like yeah. would show up and just like, smoke all the stuff and then leave and you're just like whoa where would that guy come from yeah. like <laughs> whose friend is he actually like why is he here yeah the historian smoker all the yeah absolutely uh the stephen baldwin's uh macgyver <laughs> smoker we've all we've all had to be that person right yeah like that has definitely happened <laughs> yes definitely cameos of all time i again i still give the the greatest cameo of all time to bill murray in zombie land but uh, bob saggett's oh my god Probably one of the best 10 seconds of dialogue in cinematic history. Yeah. Talk about quotable lines. <laughs> <laughs> and for Bob Saget, like back, this is 90s Bob Saget. This is, right. you know, he, he's filthy now. Like that's what he's known for, like his stand up. But this was like, uh, you know, America's Funniest Home Video era. So it right. was probably pretty shocking. Like yeah, the first time that you hear, you're, like, that I ever heard Bob Saget say anything remotely vulgar <laughs> was this scene. And I just, I laughed then. I still laugh now. <laughs> the fact that it like critics pan this thing like 29% on Rotten Tomatoes obviously it wasn't for everyone it was this was 
like you said before when we were talking about Friday, I think Friday they try to make it more relatable. This is like, you know, not quite a family movie, but it's it's for more of a broad audience where Half Baked was zeroed in to be for the by the stoners for the stoners. Yeah, definitely. This is this is a straight up stoner comedy through and through. They're not trying to make some art film that's not dramatic in any way. This is a this is a comedy like 100 percent and like just and this is also does the ridiculous stuff with the weed stuff where like they right. smoke and then they float in the air and all that kind of stuff and it, it so it, it plays on it plays on you know the high comedy like definitely the world that they live in is not the real world right just just the uh, effects like they, they just didn't care like <laughs> they just did like you where you could see the wire just like holding them up and like through yeah. the green screen to the new york skyline and all that but, but it's it, that's what's endearing about it it's it's not trying to to break ground or anything like that this is just supposed to you know instead of dick and fart jokes it's just you know like weed jokes through and through and it would be annoying if it wasn't done so well like dave chappelle is just so good at this he is so good at writing comedy where he could literally talk about anything like and and it just be comedy gold. I think if the, if anyone else tried to tackle this film, they probably would have stumbled a lot. It's good writing and it's casted great. Like all of the main comedic performances are all very solid performances. I mean, even Harlan Williams, who <laughs> which almost, it almost sucks because he's like in prison the whole time. Yeah. And he doesn't get to run around and do all the shenanigans with everybody else. But him in prison, singing with the soap, like, <laughs> <laughs> just, like, the love through the glass that, that they get for him. Like, I mean, everybody plays their roles great. I love when they all quit their jobs. I love when they get into the arguments about how they're not supposed to be spending any money. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love the backstory on how uh, Scarface's dog killer got killed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> like there's so many really great moments and i think that kind of that's what dave Chappelle does really well is he's really good with sketch comedy which is why he had his show and that's what this movie is really just a bunch of sketches yeah put together with a through line yeah like, super montagey right exactly it's it's very montagey and it's very like like okay let's come back to the apartment we'll do this goofy scene now we'll do another goofy scene at the record store where this guy works. Like he's just like, and they're just sketches that could stand alone on their own as YouTube videos if you wanted to. Oh yeah, totally. But to, like you, you would think that something like this would be like, oh, it's just a bunch of dudes smoking weed, cracking jokes. But it's not a low effort film by any means. No, like, not at all. It's super like self aware as far as like what it is, but like everything is like the the comedic timing in this is what sells it because like at any point it could just completely like the wheels could fall off but like Ch Chappelle's performance and then the rest of them him is like sir smokes a lot is reason to watch this film by itself just to see like the like his diverse like uh his performances because it's just so funny like he's literally sitting next to himself on camera like going back and forth and he completely transformed when watching it that was one of the things that i forgot like i forgot that he played himself like he played sir smokes a lot like he, i forgot they played two characters and it when they have this scene together the way that he reacts to sir smokes a lot just cracks me up like just his <laughs> facial expressions like they're good just sitting there just like when like sir smokes a lot's just like crying his eyes out and all this stuff i love that so much <laughs> like it's like his social commentary on his own goofy self and i love it <laughs> right yeah because like unlike craig where he's like oh no you know i'm gonna i'm gonna do better and elevate like thurgood is just like he kind of knows everyone sucks but he's just like oh he's in total denial he's like yeah i'm not a pothead and then it goes through the whole little thing where it shows everyone plus the dog is a pothead and you know he's right. he's literally no better than than any of them. Putting these two movies together is is a fun juxtaposition because yes, they're both weed comedies and that's what they'll be remembered for and rightfully so. But one of them is so grounded. Neither of them are not funny, and this one is the polar opposite of that. All the all the things that we complained about in the first one, where it's just like when you when you portray you know being high, it's you don't float out of a window and and all that. But seeing it on like a parody of that works just as well. So both of these films I, I still think hold up and I would recommend half baked 
probably the less people than I than I I think Friday is is more uh, entry level uh, a gateway. Uh, I, it depends on what you're looking for because I think that half baked might be uh, half baked might be the more like gut wrenching kind of comedy funny like sure half half baked might be it's I think it's it's comedic timing is more. Uh, up to par with like current era comedic timing. I think that, that that it kind of still works. Where Friday is a little bit more of if you're in the mood for like a good movie, <laughs> 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 like yeah. in the sense of like like a kind of more of like a, almost like critical achievement kind of movie. Friday sure. is definitely more that film. Half Baked is definitely more the stoner comedy. So it just depends on what you're in the mood for. Uh, I think half or I think Friday's a, it's a really funny movie. But overall, I think if you're in the mood for just like, you know, if you're in the mood for just a just a kind of like more almost trashy kind of comedy, <laughs> definitely Half Baked is the trashier movie here. <laughs> sure. And, and more more conducive under the influence, I think. It's a brighter. Definitely. It, it, it's it's literally <laughs> like looking at one of those, you know, black like posters in your room, <laughs> but like moving. Definitely more conducive for that or companion piece. Uh, while you're partaking rather than just watching like a good movie like you said like Friday but yeah that is our very first double feature uh, for the cult of films I want to thank my very good friend Mr. Tony Walters what are you up to and where can everyone find you sir uh, right now, I haven't been up to much. We had two feature films that we were scheduled for this year that both got canceled. <laughs> oh, so, or, or no. not canceled, but postponed to next year. Yeah. Um, we raised $15,000 for our movie Parallels that we were supposed to start filming in July, but we will, we will we have pushed that off to next year. But we do have uh, some cool pre-production stuff that we're working on. It's allowing us a lot more time to work on that movie. Uh, I'm currently doing a lot of previs for that. But I am shooting a music video this weekend for Brody Z, so check him out on Spotify uh, and look out for that video. And you can check us out at uh, radentertain.com and check out our sweet merch. we got lots of really cool merch on there right now. Nice. Excellent, man. Well, it's always a good time having you on the show. Can't wait to have you back on. If you want to talk movies with me, you could do so on my regular Twitter account, at Done. or now there is a Twitter account for this very show. It's just simply at The Cult of Films. But until next time, what's a, what's a good uh, stoner outro? Um, fuck you, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. You're cool. Fuck you. I'm out. <laughs>